Hi, I'm your host, Jamie Eppenberg, and a member of the Carl team. We are chatting today with Philippe Uber and Tony Guido from Ram Investments. And we'll ask the usual first questions um, about our new fund, Everest. Uh, what makes this fund so successful? A little fund history. And uh, what's important for investors to know as they're taking a look at Carl Everest? We are Carl digitally offering quantitative hedge fund strategies as fund of funds. Um, IO, which is the strategy from Ram Investments, uh, is an offering from Carl as Everest. And you can find it now on the Carl app. It is available. Uh, and uh, it's available on the app and it's still in its escrow period. So we're still waiting to get um, the amount of funds necessary to be able to launch the fund into production. So take a look and see if, if it's interesting to you. Today we have Philippe Hubert is the portfolio manager and an executive director for Ram Active Investments. He is an award-winning PhD in econometrics and statistics and also holds a master's in physics. Um, you'll see we've got two pretty much brainiacs with us today. Um, he has several publications under his name in some of the best academic journals in statistics. Philippe started his investments career in 2006, um, so he's been doing this a while. We also have Tony Guida is the portfolio manager and an executive director for Ram Active Investments as well. Um, he holds a master's in econometrics and finance. Tony is a published author in quantitative finance and a lecturer in machine learning applied to financial markets. Um, always like to have the machine learning experts with us um, and AI experts, always good to have those. Tony also started his career in 2006, so we've got some really smart gentlemen who have been doing this a while. Let's see what they've got for us today. Um, <laughs> hi, gentlemen. Great to be chatting with you today. Hello, hi, Jimmy. Hi. All right. So uh, first, be before we dive in too far, why don't you just give me an overview of what was you know, the, the historical strategy is IO from Ram Investments and now Carl Everest. Um, give me an overview of the strategy, like what universe, what universes does it trade in? What is this about? Um, you want to start, well, Philip? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Tony, maybe. Uh, so, yeah, so um, IO has been running for a long time. Um, it's running on futures uh, and on equities. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an approach that is very different from uh, what we can find in other places. We are quite excited about what we are doing. Uh, Tony and I are very close to everything that is related to science. And uh, we are very proud of saying that we are doing more science than finance and applying this, finance, uh, this science to finance. Um, so we're having a, quite a lot of fun every day, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Um, so I heard it's uh, futures. Is that what it's about? Is that what you said? Yeah. So it's it's futures. Uh, they cover the four main asset classes. So we have futures on bonds, on commodities, on the equities, and on the, um, uh, forex, forex. And uh, okay. we also have uh, an investment book on single name equities. Okay, great. Um, then. The first question we always ask is, um, what may, has made the IO strategy now Carl Everest? What has made it successful so far? Like, if you weren't managing it, why would you keep it in your portfolio? I will answer this one, uh, Philippe, if you don't mind, or if you want to complement afterwards. Uh, I would say that, uh, I mean, we are both invested in the, in the IO strategy, so this is a reality for us to be invested in, in the strategy. What we are very proud of in terms of the behavior, it's this dynamic approach. It's it's by, you'll see that what we do is very different from what is done in finance most of the time. We we want to model the market as a network that move and that could be changing shape. And what we manage to do is to have this very good uh, success rate and hit ratio at the level of each securities by creating the network of all the securities. So the dynamic approach is very interesting. For instance, when the market are moving a bit choppy, this is the short-term component, like waves, like the short-term waves, that's going to react very, uh, very fast. And that's going to, at some point, help us in order to mitigate whether it's on downside or only on the upside. So that's what, for me, it's we are the most proud of and has been the most successful in these strategies. Uh, so it sounds like it can take advantage when the market is doing well, but when it enters into some chop, you have some risk 
um, risking in there that helps make sure it, it, it takes as much advantage as it can, but it, it doesn't uh, uh, hit the downside as much. Was that? That's, it's fair to say that it's correct. The idea behind it is the process has been built around uh, evolution. So this is the uh, genetic algo, which is an optimizer in order to be a little bit brainiacs, since that's expected from us. Uh, we're using a GA, which is based on evolution. And evolution, it's, it's, it's the beautiful way of, of improving. So the idea of being dynamic is much more to be evolving through the recent past, but being in charge also having some kind of a long-term target. And that's the idea of having some kind of a waves around a, a direction which is which is clear over the long term. And that's what we do. That's why we try to model things and explain it as networks, because it's very different from systematic uh, uh, regular shop where they want to, to, to model each securities in function of different data or different characteristics. What we are interested in is to create agents which are such as mini portfolio, but we want to create billions of them. And that's that's what really makes this evolving aspect, which gives the dynamic approach of uh, even if the market are trendy, we, will, we could expect to do, to make some money. So it's not even on the choppy markets that we're gonna we're gonna succeed. In. Okay. Great. So it it I, I hear you saying a lot about you know evolving, making sure the strategy can evolve and grow. Um, I heard, you know, you have the risking in there. It looks like there's a long-term view within the strategy as well. It has long-term goals. All of that, um, I hear is important. Um, was that the way the strategy was structured from the beginning or has it evolved over, uh, over time? That's a funny question for Philippe. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> it's a funny question, you know, because at the start, uh, you know, I joined RAM before uh, Tony. I joined in 2016. Uh, Tony joined in 2019. When I joined, uh, I joined to work on this specific strategy. But uh, at that point, it was it had nothing to do with what it is right now. Actually, the, maybe some parts of the philosophy are, are still the same in the sense that we are always looking at all the whole market uh, at once, not looking at securities separately. But at that point, we didn't have any computing power. Uh, everything was coded in the easy languages or that, that anybody can use, but it wasn't fast enough to, to, go, to go further. And uh, so one of the first things we did was to improve that. And actually with the, uh, with the coming of the GPU cards, I don't know if you know what a GPU card, it's what Nvidia invented. It's those uh, video cards that are done for, for video games in the right. computer, you know, the start yeah. it was for that at least. And uh, I mean, it was so successful and so powerful that very rapidly NVIDIA uh, went for uh, high power computing. And for us, it's it's like a revolution, you know? So now you, you, we, we are able to extract the power of those uh, those graphic, uh, graphic cards, so those GPUs. And now the process is so fast that it opened many doors for us. You know, usually what you do in finance is that you have to use your experience or, or um, papers that you've read to, 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 to give you some leads. On our side, we have so much computing power now that we can be much more statistical in our approach and forget about what we think we know or what we think we don't know and go for trying stuff and trying like everything. So we, we like doing something that is not constrained anymore, at least not constrained by our finance experience. And this is why we're saying that we are very happy to, to do more science than finance, because this is the approach that we, you would have if you would do just fine, uh, sorry, if you would just do science, science. you would go for, for, uh, for a try without any a priori uh, assumption and just go for trying and see what the data mean, what the data tell you. And so, you know, this was not the approach at the, at the start. At the start, we couldn't do that. We were well, not able to do that. And today we keep improving our all our software or all our tools, which means that we can, all the time we can go further in, in, in this philosophy. And this is something we like very much with Tony. Very interesting. Obviously, um, Carl, this is very important to Carl. We, we, we say over and over, the reason we choose quantitative hedge funds is because 
you know, basically humans cannot process the amount of data available today. We, we just can't. And, and even if we can bring in a certain amount of data, our assessment of it is slow, right? So it sounds like you guys are getting over these two hurdles. You can process lots of data and you can do it very quickly. And that was the big shift um, in, in the strategy that has obviously excited you guys, but I think a lot of people are very excited about these new possibilities, quantitative possibilities. Um, Tony, we talked about your machine learning background. Is machine learning part of this strategy? Well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a super question uh, that we have a lot with prospects and our clients. Uh, we both teach her with Philippe and, and we, we fancy ourselves to, to be capable of, of, of sharing the knowledge that we uh, acquire over those years in order to receive some. The idea of machine learning is, uh, is a very, uh, very appealing over the last couple of years. What, what we do is, is, is slightly beyond that, I would say. When I first joined, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a story. It will, it will be more fun. When I joined in in uh, 2019, the first person that opened the door to the office was Philip, and uh, so as a matter of coincidence, and he showed me what they have been already uh, doing at that time. He was in charge of rebooting the strategies in order, as explained, to use GPUs to create a lot of those like mini portfolio, what we call agents. And I, I said to I said to him when we explained what, what what this whole strategy was like, tens of thousands of different agents interacting together, and and the net position of all of that was the portfolio that they were trading. So that's great. You you guys find a way to emulate all those like multi manager, right? I was I was saying that's a beautiful technical pure quant way of emulating this aspect of because as you know, multi manager at the moment in hedge funds and especially in quantitative. They are they are uh, they are having the game on their side, right? And and that was that was great because at this level, I, I, I was I was thinking about all the things that I was doing in machine learning, and I said, this is the line of research I know I'm going to end my career on, because this is beyond this aspect of creating alternative uh, type of intelligence of consciousness that's going to react in a nonlinear way, which is what is uh, machine learning and especially supervised learning is about. What we created with Philippe is this like very subatomic part of uh, intelligent trading type of conscious, which is the network, right? And it's if I had to put the machine learning uh, tag or label on what we do, it's, it's very close to reinforcement learning, but on an unsupervised way. So that's very close to what the current machine learning and all the, those new tech guys uh, from Palo Alto are doing at the moment, which is much more going towards those aspect of flow nets, of graph neural network. And that's exactly uh, what Philippe <laughs> did found out as a matter of, not a coincidence, but it was not, that has not been searched in the way uh, of machine learning per se. And that's because he was not referring to machine learning in a very unconstrained manner that they find out these this very nice properties and this line of research. Very interesting. Um, it uh, is. I, yeah, and and I love the way you put it that it's like a beautiful, beautiful network. Um, uh, it's uh, very appealing to the statist statistical folks among us who are looking for this computer investments. Um, uh, the ability to take in so much more and have that you know unsupervised space where something is learning without you having to put your own layers on it, right? own human layers over it with all of that bias. Um, so, so it's, it sounds like it's been a great progression and the power and the data and everything that's happened and the technical advancements, you guys have been working with them, growing with them, all great. Um, let's talk about the market for a second. So uh, I will say guys, it's like June, 2022 uh, for folks who may be listening to this later. Which means in 2020 and 2021, aside from a pandemic, there was a big retail investment uh, revolution, right? Retail investors really came into the fold and they kind of changed and shook up the market a little bit. It's a huge change. And on top of that, in this June of 2022, the market has been, there's been inflation and the market's really, people are talking recession right now. So how has that, um, how have you at Ram Investments and specifically with IO, have you guys had reacted to that? Have you had to make adjustments? What are your thoughts on this new retail market? 
Well, it's uh, if you don't mind, Tony, I'll go with this one. Um, it, it's a very interesting one, and it's the biggest challenge we ever had uh, with Tony. Uh, you know, as as we explained a few times already, uh, we are not looking in a bottom up way uh, to the market. We are not looking at the securities and trying to find patterns which with each of uh, each of them separately. So since we are looking from above and the whole network at once, I mean, it's great because it's it's new. Uh, we don't think a lot of people do, do that this way. It comes with one single weakness right now, and it's not really a weakness in the process, it's a weakness in the data. We are in an environment today that hasn't existed since the 70s, you know, the yeah. disinflation story. And uh, since we, you know, we, we, we need a special kind of data, we need a lot of data, uh, quite con concentrated data with uh, with quite large in the um, quantity of securities. Our by our um, data set stops to 1988 when we look back. So that means that everything that happened during the 70s is not in the data that we use to train or to uh, to to train our models. Interesting. So so that means that at the start of this inflation story. We, we got to a point where the, the, the equity side was kind of learning and had to learn something new. And you, you know, when you learn, you learn by making mistakes. So at the start, it didn't work so well. On the future side, you know, this kind of story that we are having now with inflation is very much like, you know, when we had the oil at $147 in 2008, we have those, we have those moves. You know, commodities, for instance, they are not behaving like stocks. It's not always going up. It's going both ways. With stocks and bonds, it's been going, going the same direction for, what, 30 years, 40 years now? And suddenly it reverses. So on the futures, it works great. It works amazingly well. On the equities, there is this challenge that we are... We are in a situation where we have no data that look like what we are seeing today. So we had to make a few adjustments. You know, these agents that we are training, usually we were training them every year because by trying, we saw that training them every six months or three months was giving the same kind of results. But gotcha. now, as of today, we are in this special situation where every day is a new day, is a day of new data. So now we, we, uh, we change the frequency of retraining our agents. Now we are training them every month or every four months, it's going to be every month now. And we already see the impact of that. We already seeing that the uh, the process or our big intelligence, if we could say that, I mean, this thing, we, we, see, we should find a, a name for it. A name, yeah. <laughs> it's thing to learn now, and we see that it's improving. So it's, it's very exciting. You know, from the scientific point of view, from a statistical point of view, it's great because, I mean, it's, it's a base case scenario where you see that suddenly your sample doesn't look like the population. So you train on something that is not exactly like it is now in reality, and you suffer from that. And we are working on that. So we didn't change anything in the process because we, we really think that it's an interesting uh, uh, way of, th of thinking. But we have to provide more data or to provide the data on a higher frequency. That is very interesting. Um, so I think it's very interesting that you were training once a year and now you're like, we're going to go to tra training once a month. I mean, that's, you know, it's really profound. And it, I think it demonstrates the amount of change happening. Um, right. Obviously the 1970s, yes, you know, things happened then, but it's been a while and there's certainly different conditions um, regardless of whether you had the data or don't have the data, like conditions are real. I mean, this is, this is a whole new world. Let's just put it that way. Um, so such an interesting story. Um, okay. So, uh, you guys already gave us a little bit. Can you give us a teaser? We, we sometimes go back, uh, and I, I might be a little delayed on this listeners, but we sometimes go back after this first round and we talk about risk and how your strategy handles risk in a whole nother episode. But why don't you guys just give me a one minute teaser on how the strategy handles risk and how it's managing, um, keeping people out of, you know, the downside wherever it can. Well, the risk aspect uh, in what we do is uh, slightly different from, uh, I would say, from the usual hedge funds. For instance, if you look at um, 
more CTS people, which we are not CTS, but still we, we have trained following agents that we created that simulate and emulate uh, CTA behavior. Most of the time, what, they, what they're gonna do is in order to limit those losses that could happen, especially because they are following a trend which is not rewarded, is to put stop loss in, in places. Uh, with Philip, uh, unless Philip uh, thinks otherwise, but I would be surprised. Uh, we we love to remain as unconstrained as possible. So the idea of our model is to provide an embedded diversification, which uh, already is the best safeguard in order to avoid the usual trap, which are, for instance, concentration risk, which we don't have. We only have a hard constraints on uh, bones in order to avoid, since, since depending on the duration, you could need much more leverage into those bones in order to extract, right? If it's a short-term bone, for instance, you need to have much more, much more uh, leverage in order to match the role of the full strategy. Except those hard constraints on some very specific cases, the, the strategy that we're creating, it's, it's creating out of hundreds of thousands of different agents. So all those agents, they follow different trading rules every day. So some of them might be longer securities, the other one might be short the securities. So what we do, it's the net position of all that. And the full process is creating a distribution of weights, which is always in twin kind of a corridor, which avoid those, those problems. Since we also fancy ourselves to be extremely dynamic, the turnover of the strategy is more than 20,000% per year. So that's a lot. In order to avoid, <laughs> it is, it is, but you'll see is. That there, is, there is a why behind that. The, the fact we trade the most liquid futures and the most liquid equities in the world. Why? Because we need to change position very often. One day will be long securities, two days after that, we might be deep short of it. Why? Because we have this like dynamic approach, which is the net position. It's the average of the full ensemble of the networks. So risk for us is already uh, embedded in that. And I will I finish on one point, and I'm sure that Philippe might, might complement is The way we model things is very different from other people, because we model when we create our gems and we select them, we already select them net of fees. For instance, imagine an agent which is churning and with a look back, which is four or three days, very, very short. It's going to change position a lot. It's just going to create a lot of turnover. We already factor in the turnover and the cost it's going to produce. So all those different layers within the process makes that the, we, we, we don't have to think in terms of stop losses because this is the full dynamic uh, uh, weight which which matter for us? If we stop at some point, we're gonna. We, it's just like uh, cutting an arm for the next rebound and the next PNL that we are gonna do at some point. Excellent. So it sounds like it's all built in, and then obviously, it, I think the investors will like hearing that you know fees and and the you're looking at a total position including everything. Um, investors really like hearing that as well. So that sounds like a, a, a great continued conversation um, for another episode. Um, wanted to say thank you guys so much for chatting today. I do always Thanks. ask. Yeah, it's been fun. This is a fun strategy. Um, and it is the release of Everest. I'm sure everyone was waiting for Everest. Oh, <laughs> uh, you guys caught the name. Um, uh, I always ask, do you have a final word for our investors? We'd like to communicate the excitement that, that we have. The excitement that we have is, is to be to be in a good direction of finding a really new way of and making it uh, consistently uh, performing. And on top of that, this new way, it's extremely interesting in, in, in the wake of all the, we've been taught in finance over the last 20 or 25 years, because it's a different way of looking at things, which is much more network based. And if you think about that, if you think about your life of every day, you are every day more and more touched by network types of, of behavior in social media, in the way you do your Google searches, all those graphs, they are an expression of the intelligence, right? It's exactly how your brain function. When you think about something, a smell or something, an image just pop up, pops up. And that's the graph which is activated. This is what we want to do. This is what we are doing. And we are, at the best of our knowledge, the only one 
up harvesting this path uh, and very proud of it and already proud of the results. Yeah, it's, you guys have done a ton of change and everything sounds very new and exciting. So we will let our investors take a look and make some decisions out there on what their interest is. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Tony and Philippe Thanks. for joining us today. Thank you very much, Amy. It's good to chat with you. Uh, listeners, thank you so much and we will see you next time. Bye-bye now. Thank you for listening to the Invest with Carl podcast. The views shared on this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views of Carl. This podcast is intended for informational purposes only and is not intended to constitute and should not be deemed to be an offer to sell or a solicitation of an offer to buy any security or investment, financial advisory, legal, tax, accounting, or other professional advice. Carl funds are currently available to accredited investors with a minimum investment of $20,000. To learn more about Carl and to download the Carl app, go to investwithcarl.com.